Hey guys, Norm McGregor on Niles of Hideaway for our own adventure. Okay, beautiful sunny day here. Well, actually, it's been pouring all morning, but uh, now the sun's coming out. So, uh, I'm going to talk about solar off grid backup. But first, I'm going to show you what's happening in the solar greenhouse. Okay, so the last time we looked in the greenhouse, we had seaweed all over the place. Well, Deb has got all the rototilling done. And she's done a really, really good job. And I've got. Uh, some green onions, some kale, chives, stuff growing. I've got uh, celery, spinach, and uh, those radish things growing in the ground there. And I've also got my little garden here started. All my little plants. I've got uh, peppers, tomatoes, uh, cucumber, sunflowers, Zucchini and spaghetti squash started here. And I got some more trays. Picked those up yesterday. And I'm going to be uh, getting the rest of this going. So here we are, March, and uh, our garden is in go. Okay, let's go talk about solar. Okay, so there's no doubt that when you talk to people about solar energy, what they want to do is they want to save money. Okay, and then you talk about they want to have backup power. Well, I'm going to show you how you can have both on a small system. Now, you're not going to get solar all the time, uh, but you'll have power all the time if you have a power outage. But I'm going to show you how to maximize even a small system. And mine's only a 1.4 kilowatt system, so that you can save a ton of money. So let's go take a look and see what I've done. Okay, so what I wanted out of my system was primarily a backup but I also want to use it to save some money too. So what I now have got my Xantrex inverter, and as we zoom in, we can see we're only pulling in 1.8, watts, which doesn't seem like a lot, but what we've got to look at is this system is actually in float, and it's been in float for one hour and 37 minutes so far today. Now, in my state of charge, my batteries are 100% full, so this thing is basically only maintaining the battery, and because of the way I've got my Magnum inverter set up, it's powering any load that's in the house. So right now, uh, what I've got wired into the system is my fridge, my freezer, I got some lights, I got... Uh, uh, some all my electronics, my TV, PVR, uh, satellite, internet, computers, um, anything that's on a sensitive load, and anything that I need, you know, as a mainstream, I've got that on this system. Now this is a 4,000 watt inverter, so it can pretty well handle everything I can throw at it. And uh, look at how we've got it all wired up. The Magnusine runs through. A BX cable going to this sub panel. Now this is an alternative way of doing it. Okay, you may want to do it differently, but this is the way I've done it because this actually works for me. So I've got a series of breakers here. I've got my inverter input. Uh, I've got my freezer here. I've got my uh, fridge here. I've got my computer entertainment, and I've got two banks of lights. Okay, so this is all that I've got so far. I've got lots of room for other stuff. And uh, we're going to do that. Now the sub panel, okay, the wires go out, they're wound through the back of the thing, and they're actually run as a dedicated circuit to each of those appliances. So let's go upstairs and see what we've got. Okay, so I'm actually uh, still in the basement here, and this is my freezer, okay, and what I've got him, I've set a, a secondary box beside the house power. Now this is solar, this is running off of solar, and this is one dedicated 50 amp, 15 amp circuit, and it will run off of solar, and if I run out of power on solar, it, the inverter will automatically switch back uh, to house power, so this will never be off. Okay, so the other critical appliance that I have is my fridge, and what I've done, again, down beside the plug, I've wired in, the gray box down there is a secondary power, 
and that is the solar power and it's powering the fridge and I've actually got an extension cord in there that we plug our coffee pot into in the morning which is kind of cool saves quite a bit of power there too and in a power out we always have coffee okay TV computers satellite internet all that kind of stuff okay what's really nice about solar power is it's very clean power so all these things run much better and much clearer than they do on uh, regular power but I've also got a box down there and that is running in addition to uh, the power which actually feeds on this side regular house power um, but this makes sure that we've always got communication and TV in a power outage okay so next what I've got is uh, this is our primary living room light area and this is the, normally the plug we run it off of but I've run a, another box in and uh, so we're running the living room lights and the kitchen lights off of this and Deb's also got her computer plugged into that so these are some of the things that I have done so that I have power back up uh, in a power outage and it's something we use on a regular basis that I can cut our energy bill okay so we're back down the basement with the inverter and mine's a, a Magnusine now um, most inverters are pretty much the same they have the same features so the menus may be a little different but the features are going to be very similar so let's take a look at the uh, controller for this and what we want to do is we want to go there's a button called control so this is showing me state of charge 100% now this is you hit the control button and right now I'm in VDC connect okay and what is that that is voltage DC connect so what that does is as long as the batteries and solar are within a certain voltage okay uh, they will run uh, all the systems if it drops outside of that it will automatically switch to AC now we can go in here we hit the select button and we can also choose auto connect so by selecting auto connect what that does is this always runs regular power but if there's a power outage it will automatically switch to battery now in the winter when I run as, as a backup this is the mode that I run in so that when we have a power out uh, I've always got reserve power but in the summer spring summer and fall okay uh, when we get lots and lots of Sun okay I switch it from auto connect to VDC okay or voltage DC connect and therefore I am running specifically and totally off of solar at this moment until the battery level gets down but as long as I've got, and we'll take a look at the meter, we're inverting, okay, and we're actually losing four amps uh, right now because the sun is behind, sitting behind the cloud. So we'll go into DC meters, we'll go into battery monitor, where batteries are 100%. Oh, now we're, see, now we're running, we're actually got 2.2 amps DC coming in more than what we're using. So obviously we've either got a cloud edge effect or the clouds, clouds are clearing, but we've now got more sun. So this is now charging the battery and powering my fridge, freezer, TV, satellite, whatever is running in the house. And uh, we're making power for backup. Okay guys, so that's just another way of uh, configuring your off-grid solar so that you can actually not only use it for backup, but you can also help reduce your energy power. Now here in British Columbia, Canada, electricity is really cheap. Okay, we're, we're nine cents a kilowatt, and if you use a kilowatt of power, you get billed nine cents. Okay, there's, there's no additional fees or extras or transmission fees. Uh, I come from Alberta, and it was ridiculous. Okay, they said, oh, we're only going to charge you 8.8 .8 cents a kilowatt, but by the time you're done with all their extra fees and this and that and distribution, okay, you're paying 23 cents a kilowatt. 
and it made a lot of sense to you know spend a lot more money on solar but in British Columbia at nine cents a kilowatt you know you can go with a small system and you can have huge savings and they also got really cool programs uh, BC Hydro um, they give you a if you reduce your energy consumption by 10% they give you 50 bucks back like how cool is that and if you maintain it they give you $25 a month after that so it's just a here they're just like really really good but we have a lot of hydro generation power uh, so we're not doing a lot of pollution it's very clean power very reliable power um, except here on the island it can get a little dicey we do get high winds and everything else so having backup is really nice um, but uh, just a different way of doing it you can go with big systems you can go with small systems Big systems to power your house totally, uh, small systems just as an emergency backup, or what I've done is I've gone with a medium system, which gives me the best of both worlds. All right, guys, Norm McGregor on Niles of Hideaway for Island Adventure. Take care.